All right, we went ahead and entered that. A little bit late, but we're still in from uh, 115. Big push down here. Very nice push. Yep. All right, let's prop the 180, 180 strike put, and let's yeah, go ahead and build that 103 up to 107 now. Set so a sell to close for uh, 128, or let's move that up actually, 130. Are you, where'd you close it? And we're going to readjust and we are going to fill at, let's let it run out here a little bit. Let's fill at 112 and out at 112. There we go. We did fill at uh, 131 on Apple. It's already to 142. Yeah, it's 115 here on. What, what, what'd you sell Apple for? Uh, 131 for wow. one. Uh, 8.7 on mine, Joe, and Q. And 13.9 for Apple. Up to 116 now on on the 180 strike put. So uh, we've got some more wiggle room. But you're out of the trade right now, right? Uh, yeah, we're all out. Yeah, we were in the 180 strike foot on, on two. Um, you already bought it? No, no, no. Okay, no. A listener had a question, so I wanted to tell you yes, what uh, strike we were at. Uh, this is from Ben. Good morning. Uh, what key things do you wait to see to make your first trade after the open besides the chart signal spreads? Anything else? Um, well, we, 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 you know, really pay attention to in the mornings to uh, E2 and E3 right here. We want to see how significant of a range there is, uh, because that, you know, that shows us that it'll be in this certain position for, you know, an extended period of time, uh, longer than, uh, than E1. E1's on a shorter time length as E2 and E3, so E2 and E3 is, you know, projecting and predicting a longer time frame of the current momentum. Um, so, you know, if there's a pretty significant range on E2 and E3, which there is, you know, it's a pretty safe bet that it's going to be in the, uh, in that certain momentum for, a, a, you know, a good amount of time slow. That's the, one of the main things we look at. And then we also look at the um, option price fluctuation. We'll see if it moves up, you know, pretty quickly, you know, one to two cents or three to four cents. You know, if it hikes up really quick, you know, that's a pretty good um, installment of the volume at that specific time. So uh, we try to... <clears throat> Take full advantage of uh, of that. So that's uh, those are the main things that we that we are looking for um, in the mornings. Um, Frank, Tony, you said you were prepping the 184 put, and then immediately said filled at. You say you are entering or something else to indicate you were jumping in. Uh, yeah, I mean it was moving really fast. This is this is kind of you know sometimes when the price is moving so fast. You kind of have to, you know, skip the, not really skip, but we have to move pretty quickly. So um, I said I was prepping the 184 call, then I said cancel that, and then we're going to head over to the 180 strike put. So um, I did mention that, but uh, we'll try to be a little more clear, I guess. Uh, I was talking loud too, as well, so it can get a little confusing sometimes. Uh, this is uh, a question from Reese. How are you? Tr how are you deciding what strike to do? Uh, we just the same rule applies. We always try to stick around the dollar or 
um, the dollar mark. So if that is, you know, three or four out of the money, we'll just head on down there because that's just a lot of, that price point is all, is, it has a lot of action at it typically. And you can see that in the, in the various bid and ask size fluctuations on your screen, if you've got that, uh, you got that column set up. So we always try to stick around the dollar. So like for, for instance, today at the money is 182.5, well now it's 182. Um, and at 149, so we got one, two, three, three out of the money would be the dollar mark. So it's the same as always in that aspect. <clears throat> be big today that it goes span. Yep. <laughs> True. I'm gonna reprep this uh, put in case E1 rejects here and starts to turn down hard. Seems more Seems the market turned around because uh, China softened their stance on the, the trade stuff again. So that's good. Got you one pushing straight up here, and the ticks doing opposite. It tells me it's probably uh, probably going to reject here in its next frame. And if it does, it'll have enough of a gap to cross down hard. And E2 and E3 are still in a great put position. That's why we're looking at the put right now. There's the first part of the turn. Let's see if it continues. M1 did make it through M2, so Let's see what happens here. Price is fluctuating a lot, actually. Uh, it was just at 135, and then a couple seconds later, it was at 129, 131. Yeah, now it's 126, 28 without even going up that much. So be very, um, very careful with your fills today and very, um, very aware that these things are turning around, you know, three, four percent in half a second. Back down to 34, 38. Yeah, entering it this second would just be a best of luck type situation. E2 starting to flatten out on bottom turn out. And that's a really nice push here on the Q side. Uh, let's prep at 184.5 strike call on uh, on Q. Said so call. Yeah. <clears throat> a nice huge spike of uh, volume the last couple of minutes, but it seems like it's um Looking for reversing on that a little bit.
We're up pretty good. We're up 22.63% over just two trades. And yesterday we were only up 31 over six. That's good. Oh, let's go ahead and, well, actually, no. never mind. We're about to enter there, but it didn't push up as long as I was expecting it. So, what does light say? <clears throat> Uh, so another question here from uh, Reese. Uh, the purpose of the Bollinger Bands is just for support resistance levels, correct? Um, yeah, yes, and also um, there it's just a nice indicator for us to see, you know, influxes of volume. So when it, when it gets really tight, okay. So look at your look at the chart here at um, nine. 947 um you see a little you see a little bit of a pinch not anything significant but it's just a little bit of an example that we have so when it's a little pinch like that and then it opens up pretty wide um that's just a uh, a indicator or a sign for us to see okay there's been a significant increase in volume here pretty good you know a pretty good point to uh possibly make some trades. Um, now, like in this situation here at the end of the current time, 951, um, it, it, it can get really tricky if you try to enter in when the Bollinger Bands are super wide like this because um, there's a lot of bouncing around. So you wanna catch it before it gets this wide, if that makes sense. So you wanna get in when there's a pinch, like if you go back here, just look at, um, you know, earlier this morning, let's see, when it opened up there, you can kind of see a little bit of a pinch, a little bit of a flare opening up. That's the setup we're looking for. But so it's just, uh, it's just another indicator to help show us volume, um, volume. And then also it is used for support resistant levels at different times. So, um, so yeah, it's just uh, probably those two reasons are what we mostly use it for. The best setup, what we like to see is um, E1, 2, and 3 all agreeing in their separate cases with a tighter Bollinger Band flaring open. And then we want to enter at that point. And that's, that's, that's the best setup that we're looking for. But we do not use the Bollinger Bands for, you know, predictive indicators. It just tells us the current situation. So, so uh, don't get too wrapped up in it. Just pay attention more to the E1, 2, and 3 lines. Um, those, will, those, are, those are our predicting indicators. And then uh, we can just use what we're looking at here, all these lines on the screen as other confirmations. So, um, yeah, so just keep that, uh, keep that little tidbit in mind. Also, if you want to uh, subscribe to this tweet I send out today with the individual trades, I send out on that other sheet uh, just the total returns for the day. But this uh, this uh, tweet that comes out has each individual app here, whichever, whatever they're trading, the returns for each. When you sign up, it's at uh, capital C, capital S, capital E. 
CSE all capitals and then TWIT. Call opening up here. All right. Uh, Reese says, got you. Thanks. Thank you, Reese. Uh, Eric says, for E1, 2, and 3, they need to be crossing over or at least very close to an ideal tree. Uh, yeah, so... Um, I mean, it's very rare that you're going to get them crossing over all at the same time. That'd be a huge volume move there. But if you're looking back at uh, the screen here at uh, 941, E1 cross, at 945, E2 crossed, and then at, um, and then at uh, 948, E3 cross, or you can go back a little further. This is probably a little clearer. 935, and then you got 936, and then 936 again. All of them cross at the same time. That's what you're looking for. Um, all of them crossing at the same time, or are they already have crossed? In which case, E2 and E3 are already in a put or call position, and then you're just waiting for E1 to uh, cross back into a call or a put position. So like right now, it just these two are already in call positions, and E1 just crossed here a couple minutes ago. That uh, that's kind of the setup you want. So it's those you know those two possibilities is what you're looking for. <clears throat> Big plane going overhead. Um, see. Yeah, the call didn't really uh, decide to push there. It's been pretty, pretty darn sporadic, so. These waves continuing if anything opens up for us. <clears throat> Pretty good push up here on Q. Let's prep the uh, 184.5 sh 
strike call on Q. And, uh, let's go ahead and enter here. Filled at 98 cents up to a dollar. Uh, back down to 99 cents now, up to dollar two. Let's let it sort of close for a dollar three and try to get out of this here. And uh, filled at a dollar four. So a quick six cents there on that little bit of a push. Good catch. Um, yeah, yeah, that's 6.12 percent. That's good. Yes, yeah, so that was a pretty good move there. Um, to capitalize on that. As you can see, E2 and E3 are in call positions right now, and uh, it's pushing up pretty nicely. So, we went ahead and pulled the trigger there. It's actually pushing real hard now. It's up to a dollar, dollar eight. Did you back QQQ again? No, no, no. I'm just saying it's up to a dollar eight now. Okay. Um, got some more questions here. Uh, this is from Joseph. Tony, after E1, 2, and 3 have crossed to either a put or call position, what's your next indicator? Um, that's, those, are, those are the main ones. Um, and then you just kind of want to keep an eye out on what the tick is doing. And um, also just what the tick is doing, and that's conversely the same thing as watching the option price in your option chain there. But uh, those are the main ones. So we're trying to time the entries based around where E1 is in the case. It's a little in the, in the middle here, so not as clear direction that it could go. It could go either up or down. But uh, if it's for a call in this current situation, great positions, E2 and E3. We'd like E1 to be a little lower in the case, working back upward. But, um, you know, that's the ideal setup. But that's, you know, pretty much what we're looking for, just agreement on the lowers. And then you can pretty much enter at any point there. So, <coughs> Yeah, that's uh, those are the main ones. Just keep you know seeing, uh, keeping an eye on the relationship of the tick and the top Bollinger Band and M1 is another one you kind of take a look at where it is you know position wise there, and then also um, you know the price fluctuation. So it's just a couple. It's just a combination of all those things, but they're all related. If that makes any sense. They're all closely related, but. Uh, Huge push down here on uh, on Q. Um, let's prop one eighty point five strike, but and let's see. Probably a little too late now, but a big downturn here in E2 and E3. Not, not enough confirmation, but we do got to prep out from George, uh, buy to open 184.5 call at 99 and it closed at $1.04 about two minutes ago. 
trade lasted about two minutes when the charts were stacked up for the call. Awesome stuff there, George. Solid 5% on that return. It's great stuff. Thanks for sharing. Uh, Lannon, morning guys, two trades this morning. Apple put at a 0.8% um, and Apple call at 4%. So good stuff there too, Lannon. Solid work. Hey, uh, Mike uh, and Tony, you guys got your email from uh, Marcus, did you, that shows you the, the link for the day? Podcast? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, I have not got that yet. Did he send it out today or? Yeah, I sent it out a couple days ago. Oh, a couple days ago. Yeah, I got that one. Okay. <clears throat> he says try to be in about 10 minutes early. Yeah, about 9.50. Okay. Oh, sure. Lane uh, sent back some feedback. He's like, sorry, that was a 5.8% return, not 0.8% on that put. So awesome stuff, Lane. It's, it's really sweet. It's uh, over 10% for the day. It's good stuff. And also, um, Joe mentioned this. Um, Joe mentioned this yesterday, I believe. We have the new Micro Moment Trading website open, so you guys can go over there and just check it out. It's micromomenttrading.com. It's uh, the new website, so it looks pretty good. And um, <clears throat> you'll get some. I'm not real sure it's, it's, it's open yet. Well, it's not open, but they can visit it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, I, I said, I, I said, you got that email I just sent to you, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. That's, yeah, that's what I'm looking at. So, check that out, micro moment trading. Yesterday, it, we just completed our third trade yesterday our third trade we were had a total of 24.15 and today it's third trades 28.75 so. yeah that's all what's the total for the week joe uh, total Two hundred and twenty point twenty four percent. Well, good stuff. Yeah, great week so far. So that's uh that's really great. Um, I'll stay on for maybe two or three more minutes. So if anyone's got any more questions, we'll answer those. But um, I will probably be heading off here in a couple minutes to um, get prepared for this podcast we got going on here in about an hour. So. Um, Go ahead and send those questions if you got them. If not, we'll just head off. We got one from Marianne here. Good morning, guys. Uh, thanks for all you do. The education is awesome. Do you guys ever consider the Delta? Uh, great question, Marianne. We do sometimes. We just like to use that as a reference point. It's not really any significant indicator, um, you know, telling us where you know, a certain price a lot, uh, you know, lies or sits. But um, you know, if you're if, if at the money is you know at 50% or higher, then it's pretty pretty strong day uh, typically. But you can't really rely on them for any any significant um, meaning, to be honest. So, but uh, thanks for the question there. Hope that hope that helps.
don't think we have any questions, Joe. So I think, uh, I think we're good for today. We'll head off and uh, get ready for this podcast. Okay, great. We'll see you over there. Works for me as well. Let's see you guys. Okay. Are you leaving, uh, Ica? Yeah, I'm going to head off. It's pretty calm now, so. Good. All right, see ya.